Bonjour. Ça en fait vraiment une transformation. Oh. 
Donc la paix dans le mental, dans l'esprit, ce n'est pas quelque chose de très très petit, c'est vraiment énorme parce qu'on a énormément de distractions dans le monde ailleurs. Et si on arrive à avoir ce paix, ce calme, c'est déjà quelque chose, c'est déjà une grande étape. So in this world, nobody knows what is truth. Dans ce monde, personne ne sait qu'est-ce qu'est la vérité. There are so many beliefs. Uh, everybody seems to believe something a little bit different from everyone else. Yes, and that's why there's so much conflict uh, all throughout the world. But the good news is, is that with deep within you is the peace of mind that is the truth that this world is searching for. 
C'est la bonne oreille qui arrive sur ce que à l'intérieur de nous, à l'intérieur de l'esprit quand ça se prend la vérité qu'on cherche depuis toujours et ça c'est la même vérité partout. Yeah. And we live in a time where the quantum physicists are saying the same thing that Jesus said, that everything is connected, we are all one. So in this vast mind, there is a little tiny speck of a belief called ego. <laughs> Uh, and this is the whole problem, this tiny little speck. How to live this state of peace of mind and at the same time uh, enough money to live. <laughs> mm -hmm. So because uh, everybody has a shopping we are forced to, to earn the money to, to, to live. Huh? How to live this peace and at the same time uh, earn money. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, the, the first thing to do is to realize that that this world is a state of lack. Donc la première chose, c'est déjà de reconnaître que ce monde, c'est un, un état de, de manque. On a toujours l'impression de manque. So, everything in this world, from the plants and the trees, to the animals, to the people, uh, need things to survive. Donc tout ce qui existe ici, que ce soit des plantes, des, des animaux, ou les humains, tout ça, on a besoin de quelque chose. Yeah. It's a very unnatural condition. It has nothing to do with heaven. And so all of the needs come from the belief in lack. Uh, Uh, the ego has convinced everyone that lack is real, scarcity is real, and that you have real needs. And Uh, nobody seems to question these needs. It just seems to be the problem is how do I fulfill these real needs? Uh, did you ever notice when you read like uh, fairy tales uh, that Uh, there aren't all these concerns uh, for needs in the fairy tales. Est-ce que vous avez déjà remarqué quand vous lisez des contes, hein, des contes pour enfants, et qu'en général tous ces problèmes de quotidien ne sont pas, ne sont pas là. Hein? Il n'y a pas tous ces, ces besoins. It's like Cinderella is not concerned whether she'll have enough food to eat. Cinderella, est-ce qu'elle va avoir suffisamment à manger ou pas? Yeah. yeah, the story is always about some other problem. So, uh, the one lack that needs to be healed is the uh, is the fragmented perception. Fragmented perception. Yeah. Where We're seeing everything as if it's separate and disconnected. And once you can learn to see everything is connected, then all of the lacks disappear as well. 
C'est au moment où tu reconnais que tout est lié, tout est connecté, que cette impression du manque va, va disparaître. Uh, I was just doing a, a gathering in Australia, and the woman who was uh, with me uh, had not eaten any food for 15 years. Donc, il y a justement en Australie une réunion où une femme a participé qui n'avait euh, qui n'a pas mangé pendant euh, 15, 15 ans. 15 ans. Elle n'a rien mangé. Yeah. She just drank uh, tea and water. Jasmine, yeah, Jasmine. Jasmine, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Donc, c'est une femme qui vit sans, sans manger pendant très très longtemps. Hein. Elle, elle boit un petit peu, c'est tout. And so she spent most of her days just in prayer and meditation, extending love. So la majorité, la plupart de sa journée, elle, elle a prié, elle, elle a médité, elle, elle a vraiment fait grandir ce, ces amours à l'intérieur. Elle a mis du temps à, à faire ça. It was just a demonstration that uh, that hunger is just part of the belief in lack. Même la, la, avoir faim, c'est juste une croyance qui me manque quelque chose. And it plays out in so many ways uh, for human beings. Et ça, ça se présente dans des manières tellement différentes pour vous les êtres humains. So, as you go for healing, you have to go through many different steps. Donc, le chemin de la guérison, euh, dans, sur ce chemin, on passe quand même Uh, for many, to just have a good job and income is a is a big step. And then to have a job that you really love, uh, that you really enjoy, is another big step. C'est encore une étape, une étape. And then, uh, then when you get to the point where you don't even need a job, but everything is provided, that's another big step. Et l'étape suivante, c'est là où tu as tu, tu n'as même pas besoin d'un travail, d'un job. Et tout, tout ce qui est donc bien besoin, tout est là, tout, tout est là pour toi. Tu n'as même pas besoin de travailler. Yeah. Luke and I were talking about these steps earlier today because he's been taking one step higher and higher each time. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> for me that's that's the way that it went. It was uh, way back in nineteen ninety one the spirit spoke to me and said, and told me I had worked on my last job. It was a little bit surprising. Uh, to take early retirement at 33 uh, years old. So, so yeah. I didn't know how this was going to work. Uh, but I was just told uh, I would never be charging money ever again. Mais on lui a lui a a a a a a a a a a a and I, I didn't really feel that this was practical. Uh, it didn't seem practical at all. No. But I was told that it was part of a lesson in trust. 
Donc, euh, il a appris que c'était une bonne leçon de, de confiance. I was told to trust that things would work out and that my needs would be met. So, il, uh, il a to and God is what happiness is. Dieu, c'est, c'est le bon. uh, if you're happy because of a, a promotion at the job or because of winning the lottery, uh, that is very temporary. It, it lasts so quick and it's gone. Uh, people who win the lottery, then they have problems figuring out how they're going to spend all their money. <laughs> yes, it's a strange belief that, that money would bring an end to problems. It doesn't. If you went around and interviewed wealthy people all over the world, you would find that they have lots of problems. Yes, one of the biggest problems is they're worried about losing uh, the money that they have. Uh, so they're into protecting and investing, and it's very stressful. But to learn to, to give like God gives, you don't need any special skills. Uh, you do not need wealth or possessions. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to know how to speak many languages or to speak in a very eloquent way. On n'a pas besoin de parler plusieurs langues ou de savoir comment est-ce que je vais bien m'exprimer. Uh, really, you have everything inside you already that you're going to give. On a tous déjà à l'intérieur, uh, tout, tout déjà à l'intérieur de nous pour, pour, pour pouvoir vivre comme ça. Right now. Maintenant. Uh, and this is only covered over by the ego. Mais que notre ego qui, qui m'a couvert ces idées, non. non. So the more that you just give and extend, the more that you know that you have. Uh, so it's like giving love away. Everyone has more when you give it away. Everyone, including yourself. So it's, it's actually been a very, very simple life. Uh, it has not been complex. It's been very abundant. Je pose des questions. Si tout le monde parle de cette manière-là, euh, plus personne ne travaille, il n'y a plus d'avion, il n'y a plus d'internet. Hein. <rire> non, mais c'est peut-être simple. Like uh, On a besoin quand même du travail des autres. On a besoin des autres, du travail des autres. On a besoin du travail des autres. Yes, it's, it's interesting. Um, I find when I am traveling around into the, the jungles and the mountains, uh, there is no internet. Uh, and so the people don't miss uh, the internet because they don't know what it is. Uh, it's, the internet is like a symbol of everyone being connected. And uh, but everyone was connected before the internet came along. 
Yeah. And everyone will be connected when the internet is gone. Even to travel, uh, we, we have to look at what is the purpose of travel. As one time someone said to me, uh, they said, if everything is so perfect, then why did you travel? Why go anywhere? Yeah. And I said, exactly, that's exactly how I feel. Uh, there's, no, there's no need to go anywhere. But it's good to live your life without having to need to do anything. Uh, to be motivated by love and joy instead of need. So, uh, when I have friends around the world and they say, please come, come and, and celebrate with us, then uh, it's not a difficult choice. But it's really a state of mind, uh, because when I'm in airports and in big cities, uh, nothing bothers me, traffic jams or delays of planes. Um, I, I have ceased to believe in time. <laughs> now, how, how do, can you pay the, the internet connection and the, the tickets for the, the, for the, for the, for the flight? Yes. How can you pay this? Yes. Um, what I do is I watch. I just watch. Uh, it's, a, it's a miracle to me how it happens. Uh, I don't know how it happens. <laughs> Uh, years ago, uh, when I would travel around the United States, uh, people would uh, give me, donate money for, for gasoline and, uh, for example, for this trip uh, to come to Europe, uh, the ticket was bought by the Swedish uh, Course in Miracles Network. The oldest Course in Miracles network in Europe is the Swedish Course in Miracles network. How could anyone tell you that you are less than beautiful? How could anyone ever tell you that you are less than beautiful? Comment jamais quelqu'un a pu te, ra te raconter que tu serais moins que, que magnifique? How could anyone uh, ever tell you that you are less than whole, que tu serais moins que parfait et que entier? Donc c'est vraiment assez... Ça me touche beaucoup ce chanson et voilà, aujourd'hui je crois que mon avis ça va marcher. <laughs> so, um, on va écouter ça, ça vous permet de...
bien arriver et voilà et sentir le, le lien ce feel the connection between us and uh, we all are connected and you all are really beautiful this is just magnificent <laughs> summary uh, just by saying that that who you are is is perfect but it's just been covered over by false beliefs and false concepts bref on peut dire que vous êtes tous parfaits cette perfection a été et est bien cachée parfois par des croyances par des, des pensées que vous pourriez être différent donc euh, parfois on ne va pas à cette perfection and of course the miracles is just a self study book that helps you remove all of these false beliefs and concepts donc le cours en miracle c'est juste un coup de main qu'on peut éduquer euh, tout seul à soi-même pour justement effacer ce, cette idée, euh, comment cette, cette fausse idée. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so you do have to go through this uh, very sensitive phase, but uh, but you are carried beyond it by the spirit. Donc, à un certain moment, on doit traverser cette phase d'une autre sensibilité, mais en même temps, on est on est toujours porté par le même temps. Uh, when sometimes when you <laughs> He's a so sometimes when you feel uh, like very numb and you feel like you're in a state of denial, uh, you have to come out of that somehow. 
Parfois, quand tu te sens à euh, des nages, en français, euh, dans une phase où, où on ne se sent pas bien, euh, ouais. Ouais, je suis perdu. Et puis, c'est un final, et puis, tu... Et puis, quand tu sors de ça, tu te sens plus sensible, mais aussi, les émotions sont beaucoup plus intenses. Si on sort de cet état, de cette phase, on est encore plus sensible, sensible. donc euh, on sort vraiment avec une sensibilité extrême. I have had people tell me that uh, sometimes they wish they could go back and, and turn back the page on their spiritual journey. On a rencontré des gens qui avaient, qui, qui, qui voulaient euh, retourner en, en arrière, tourner les pages en arrière. Euh, euh, pour euh, arriver au début de leur voyage spirituel. Yeah. Uh, they even asked Mother Teresa one time, if you knew what would happen after you picked up that first person off the street, uh, would you have picked them up? <laughs> Ma mère Teresa, elle a dit, si, uh, si tu sais ce qui se passe uh, après avoir uh, aidé la première personne à la rue, si tu le sais en avance, qu'est-ce qui va se passer après Est-ce que tu vas le faire Elle yeah. a dit, oh non. Elle a dit, ça aurait été beaucoup trop overwhelming. Je l'aurais juste stoppé. Right there. Elle a dit, non. C'était trop. Donc, vous devez comprendre que vous êtes dans une voie très wild quand vous ouvrez votre mind. Donc, on, on réalise que c'est comme une voie droite et une chose. Je vous ai sauvé. 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 Je As we learn to be intuitive and we learn from each other, we save time for all of us. Yes, anger is is a byproduct of, of a, a series of illusions. Uh, we, before we come to anger, we'll, we'll talk about uh, uh, sin and guilt and fear. Avant de parler de, de la colère, on parle de, de péché, de sin et de guilt and fear. Et que ta vérité a été cœur. Properly defined, sin is missing the mark. Donc, euh, pour déterminer euh, clairement, la, le péché est missing the mark. Je ne suis pas sûr bien de comprendre. Si, si tu. So, in that definition, uh, sin is like just uh, an error or a mistake. And as I said earlier, uh, mistakes are just to be corrected. Si c'est une erreur, il faut simplement le corriger. Mais uh, from the belief in sin uh, comes a feeling of guilt. Si on croit en péché, euh, de là euh, j'ai un sentiment de culpabilité. If you miss the mark, uh, then it feels like something has gone wrong. Si on rate le cible, à ce moment-là, on a l'impression qu'il y a quelque chose qui ne marche pas. Il y a quelque chose qui casse. And And the property of guilt is that guilt always demands punishment. And this is how the crazy idea of fear of God came to be. 
complètement folle de, de Dieu. C'est de la peur de Dieu. Yes. There's nothing fearful about God. Il n'y a pas de peur de Dieu. God is not judging at all. God does not punish or even know what punishment is. Dieu ne juge jamais et Dieu ne va jamais punir tout ce que ce soit. But as long as your mind is in error, then it is afraid of, of some kind of consequence. And anger is an emotion that is projected onto God. It's an emotion that that says that that uh, God is uh, looking for vengeance or revenge. But, but you learn as you work with forgiveness that anger is never justified. You learn that uh, you have to have a belief that something is outside of you and something has been done wrong to you to feel angry. So, whenever anyone feels angry, uh, deep down inside they know that there is no reason for this. And fear often follows anger because it's a sense that that something will be happening to them. There'll be some consequence for for the the anger. When you meet somebody who is angry, underneath it, it is that they are they are really very hurt, and this is more of a, a, a defense covering over the hurt. Si vous voyez quelqu'un qui est en colère, qui est fâché, euh, ça cache toujours une blessure à l'intérieur et donc il cache. C'est une défense pour ne pas montrer ce parti qui est fait. So, properly perceived, anger is always a call for love. Mm. Donc finalement, euh, la colère, ou être, quand on est fâché, c'est toujours un appel à, à colère. And when you are very patient and extend love, then the anger goes away. <coughs> but if you perceive anger as an attack, it's, that's just an interpretation of the ego. And then you will get very defensive, including a, maybe a desire to attack back. In self-defense. But this is this is always a, an ego defense. Our Christ. Self needs no defense at all. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus could be so gentle and so meek. Meek. Meek is kind of another word for gentle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so to be gentle is to be truly strong. Yeah, there is nothing stronger than gentleness. That's why Jesus said that the meek or the gentle shall inherit the earth. Jesus said that those who are in the earth will inherit the earth. 
Il est bien heureux, il répond de la sœur. Gentleness is like such a broad perspective that it just it overcomes the whole world. Almost like, like sending a, bl- a big blanket of peace to cover the whole world. Yeah. And this is the opposite of what the ego teaches. The ego says you must protect yourself and you must defend yourself. But this self that seems to need defense is just an illusion. And if, if you can realize this, then you will never have to defend yourself again. Uh, problems will just melt away. Because that is the greatest protection for your consciousness. Yeah. You learn that you don't have to take on any form of attack. <laughs> if, uh, if somebody sends you an email that seems to be attacking, uh, you always have the delete button as an option. <laughs> yes, you don't have to take it personal. You can just say, how does that get in my box? <laughs> and, and you can practice this, you know, in your relationships as well. By seeing how, how worthy you are of love. When I was a child, I was very shy and uh, I had very, very few friends. And this continued all the way through high school and into the university. But when I started working with A Course in Miracles, it just felt like my heart was opening up so fast. It was so fast that it was very scary to the ego. Yeah. It felt like I was losing control of my life. But there were so many wonderful miracles happening to me. I just thought, well, I guess this is the way the healing goes. You lose control. <laughs> and so that was back in 1986. Yeah, and it just feels like uh, my circle of friends has just grown and grown in leaps and bounds. Yeah. Because when you're not judging, you just feel very friendly. Uh, you've got no time pressure, uh, so you can just afford to be very friendly with everyone that you meet. You, you really lose uh, your sense of goals and ambitions. And in this world, the ego says that's a bad thing to lose your ambition. 
Évidemment, ce monde, notre écho veut nous faire croire que perdre ses ambitions, on ne vient pas avoir ses ambitions, c'est pour ce que c'est vrai. The first time that I realized that ambition was not helpful. La première fois qu'on a réalisé qu'on s'est fait être ambitieux n'est pas très utile. Was when I was watching the movie Gandhi. And uh, Gandhi was building a, a spiritual community in South Africa. Gandhi a construit une communauté spirituelle dans le sud d'Afrique. And he was walking with an American reporter who was asking him questions. And the reporter said, Mr. Gandhi, you're, you're quite an ambitious fellow. <laughs> And Gandhi's answer was, I hope not. <laughs> no, uh, very good, very well. Yeah, I think when you realize that that when you're working with children, really everything is telepathic. So children have uh, much more simple vocabulary and, and more simple concepts. But it's not so much what you say to them, it's what you think and what your attitude is. Children are very observant, but also they are very telepathic. If you aren't being very honest and true to them, uh, they won't pay attention. And so, when we talk about A Course in Miracles, you don't have to explain A Course in Miracles to the children. It's all for you. To, to come to a, a state of peace for yourself. And then the words you say will be given to you very easily. So, uh, people get so concerned about uh, teaching their children the right things. When they should be more concerned about being peaceful themselves and demonstrating this to the children. When children go to school, they are exposed to so many ideas from other children. Uh, you can't really control all the, the ideas or the influences they'll come in contact with. But if they see that you are peaceful and calm, they will come to you when they have a question or a curiosity. So really to teach is to demonstrate. Enseigner, c'est être un exemple. 
Uh, and this is much more important than the words that are spoken. Mm-hmm. Je dis les quatre tout de suite et on ne doit pas traverser un hall avec. Il y a beaucoup de bruit parce qu'il y a beaucoup d'enfants qui poussent et qui sont en train de dans le couloir. Alors on a toujours dit oh, en plus ça va être difficile parce que les enfants sont très énervés. En plus, voilà, et je leur dis, vous traversez tout ce bruit dans le silence intérieur. Ils comprennent ça, mais c'est comme euh, une initiation à garder le silence en soi. Et, euh, c'est très puissant. Yeah. Yeah. Now in uh, in quantum physics, we're learning that that the world is is changed just by the act of observation. So as as a teacher, if you recognize the value of the inner silence, uh, you actually will draw forth that witness in the children. Toi, tu as reconnu la, la valeur euh, de, de ce silence à l'intérieur, mais c'est à travers cette, euh, cet état que tu, 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 euh, tu apportes cette force pour ton enfant, tu transmets cette force. Tu as une liberté intérieure. Oui, c'est une liberté intérieure. Oui, parce que c'est en toi, tu es en toi, tu es en toi. Yeah. Yeah, when I was in university, I was in teacher education. Someone finally understands me. Maybe 
Ну, 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 Thank you.